I am so excited about this, guys. I know it's just silly, but it's, you know, it's been a while. You know, I bred big snakes when I was young. I mean, that was what I did, right? I mean, that was the majority of my production was gigantic snakes. And then I took like 10 years off where I didn't produce any big snake, not even one. And then, of course, we had that Lucy clutch like four years ago or something like that. And then we haven't had a good clutch of big snakes because I haven't bred them. Not because I can't, but I just have chose not to, right? And then, of course, Gemma, of course, I didn't really think about breeding her but because she was going through an ovulation I was like you know I might as well go ahead and breed her to night fear you guys know the whole situation well unfortunately she didn't shed very well but this shed is the important shed and of course this is what they would call the pre lay shed so we're gonna get her into a soak but of course now she's full-blown gravid right so I've got to be very gentle with her I'm not gonna manhandle her at all getting her into this water is just gonna be a kind of a slow methodical thing but believe it or not within 30 days we are gonna get a clutch of eggs we don't know if they're gonna be for we don't know if they're not going to be fertile. We have no real clue. We do know that Night Fury did breed her a handful of times before she actually ovulated. So that's a great, great sign. And I'm so glad that Gemma went back to being the sweetheart that she used to be before. So we're just going to kind of slowly let her get in the water, help her out just a little bit. Again, because she's gravid, I want to be extra gentle with her. Come on, girl. You're okay. But guys, we're literally going to be cooling a clutch of eggs here in the next, you know, three and a half, maybe four weeks top, something on that. Line. And the interesting thing is, is we've all seen kind of videos of, you know, giant snakes on eggs and how they'll be super protective of the eggs. Certainly when we pulled Lucy last time, she literally almost killed me. She was so crazy. I don't know how Gemma's going to be. Again, she's such a beautiful, tall snake. She may just let me take her eggs, no problem, or we might be in for a really big battle. But I'm telling you what, I couldn't be more excited. And it's probably one of the things that I'm the most excited about all year when it comes to production. And I didn't even plan this production. This was just kind of an unplanned thing. So we're just going to soak her for the next maybe 20, 30 minutes. Get that last shed off of her looking really good. And again, now we can mark that calendar for 30 days from now. Again, they'll lay anywhere from 21 days, sometimes even up to 40 days, to be honest with you. But it's going to be in about that 30-day range. So uh, going to clean her cage up, get her all spiffy. And guys, we are about to get a cut of reticulated python. Hopefully fertile. But even if they're not fertile, it's going to be a ton of fun. But boy, oh boy, do I hope they're going to be fertile because we could produce some night fairy some black motley golden childs that are het for ghosts Woo doggy that's gonna be some amazing baby so let's go ahead and get her cage cleaned up get her soaked up and we'll get her back in here and uh tick tock the time is ticking It's the holiday season, guys, and you want some good Christmas gifts? We have the new holiday gear from Reptile Army. That's right, tons of new cool stuff. We have Christmas, we also have New Year too, so if you have a reptile lover in your family, or if you're a reptile lover wanting to sport some cool stuff, go ahead and head over to reptilearmy.com. Join the army, get some really cool swag, and by the way, we actually have a Reptile Army Discord as well, so I'm gonna put a link right down in the description. You can join the Discord for free, hang out with us, tons of cool stuff to do over there. You guys will love it, so go over to reptilearmy.com if you want to get the coolest Christmas gifts out there. You know, it's been kind of crazy. Jessica's had a really good year with leopard geckos, but we really haven't talked about leopard geckos much. So there's a ton of leopard geckos that have hatched out, but you have some babies now. Yeah. And are these the last of the year or still some more? We have just about five more to go. So this Five is, more? So yeah. that's pretty much it. That's yeah, pretty it. much it. So let's see what we have here. They're yeah, cool. These, these look like, cool. let me take a guess. All let's right. see, uh, tremper albinos? Yep. Tremper albinos. So these are this probably tremper white and yellows, these two. White and yellows. This may be a white and yellow? Yep. Or maybe not? Uh, yeah, I think this one's a white and yellow, and then it's got a really cool head pattern. It does so have a cool head. And then what's this, just a, like a jungly type this of thing? This one's actually a, it looks like a snow raptor. So snow if you raptor. look at the eyes, it's got a glimpsal red eyes. <laughs> Tells you how good I am. I'll take it. But I'm going to take a guess on this next one. I yeah. think I've got this next one down. I really do. I think this is a bell, bold stripe, white and yellow. Yes. Is it really? Correct. Correct. Oh my gosh, I got it right. I'm no leopard gecko guy at all, but uh, the truth is is that bells just look a little bit interesting. You can see there's one more egg left here, uh, but yep, you can see there's some mm -hmm. something in there, so there's going to be so another good. baby, hopefully. But that is a beautiful bell white and yellow. I mean, that's amazing. So, uh, so that's two, four, five geckos hatched five more to go and we are done for the year. And geckos are bought in brumation? 
Uh, not quite yet. We're like cleaning out their systems right now, so a couple weeks they'll be couple. completely down. <laughs> oh, that's nice break, nice break, and then we start all over again in a few months. If you're looking to add a new addition to your family and you want this cool lavender snow cal king or so many other clovers, and of course ball pythons, you know, everything is going to be on sale for the Black Friday over at bhbreptiles.com. I mean, there is going to be some banging stuff. Every single animal goes on sale to some percentage. This happens to be a motley scaleless corn snake, but of course, again, geckos are going to be on sale, ball pythons are going to be on sale, clubrids are going to be on sale, every single thing. So again, Friday, starting at midnight, going till midnight the next day. So again, Black Friday at bhbreptiles.com. Definitely going to need to check that one out, especially if you're looking to add a new little critter into your life. I promise, guys, this is the last shipment of animals before Black Friday sale. Uh, I, I think I might have promised that last time, but I really do believe that this is the last shipment. So what do you say we go ahead and unbox and see what is going on in here? I know there's gonna be some bangers. It's not a big shipment. This is my buddy that I basically buy everything he produces every year, and he just had the last couple clutches, and he was like, hey, do you mind if I send them? And I was like, of course. Now, uh, I'm not sure that Lori was all that happy about it, and uh, nor were some of my crew that are saying like, Brian, we have enough, you know? And I'm like, never have enough, right? I mean, come on. And uh, I know I've done a lot of unboxing lately, so thank you guys for, for putting up with me here. But like I said, this will be a pretty quick one, and and this is actually, let me see what's going on here. These are actually just a couple albino pie ball, ball pythons here. Just some beautiful albino pies, which are double recessive. Obviously, albino is recessive, pies recessive, double recessive. Basically, how you would get these, you breed an albino to a pie, you get double het albino pies. Then you breed those together, and you would get a 1 in 16 odds of producing albino pie. In this case, I believe he's actually breeding albino pie to albino pie, which means you get 100% albino pie. Next bag. Like I said, there's only three bags in this entire show. Oh, and I just got bit right in the bag. But this is a beauty. Oh, doggy. Look at that right there. One snake in the bag, but it is a banger. This is actually a pewter clown ball python. So it's a pastel, it's a cine, and it's a clown ball python. Oh my gosh, that is an absolute ripper. I tell you, loving it. So hey, even with just the one snake in a bag, that was a dang good bag right there. One bag to go. And these are absolutely incredible animals. I was super excited to see these. Oh my God, they're gonna be beautiful. Oh yeah, these are great. Oh my gosh. Such beautiful animals. And again, we had some of these earlier this year and they sold super quick. There's actually these guys here, which are actually what they call Ultramel pinstripes. Of course, the pinstripe, incomplete dominant. Ultramel is recessive. And then these here are actually the Ultramels, the normal Ultramels. Just really cool. So there's actually another mutation called Carmel Albino that is uh, it's similar to this. Doesn't look quite as pretty as this. Also recessive mutation, but along with the Carmel came some kinking issues. So they say all recessive concentrate, right? So when you're concentrating, a phenotype or a color phase like a, a, a caramel per se or an ultramel sometimes you're also actually getting a defect in the case of caramels there was a lot of kinking so maybe one out of every two or three animals were came out where they'd be all kinks well the ultramels look very very similar but don't have the kinking issue so there's a whole bunch of pin ultramels and ultramels just absolutely amazing and just in time for the black friday sale so these guys will also be on the bhb reptile site here for Black Friday and even before Black Friday for that matter. So uh, awesome, that was a quick unboxing. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments which one you like best. All right, she's been soaking for 20, 30 minutes and it looks like uh, it's done the job. Hi, baby girl. How you doing, sweetheart? You doing good? So it just makes sure all the skin is off of her as we slowly, gently, again, get her back in her enclosure. You see all the skin will just kind of come right off her. Come on, baby girl. Come on, baby girl. Uh, I'm going to want her to really just kind of claw crown it and her own as best as possible so that I'm not, again, disrupting any of that egg stuff. Now, the good news is, is that she won't shed again, right? This is her last shed before laying eggs, so I don't have to worry about it. So she really probably won't go to the bathroom or really pretty much anything. So we might have to spot clean the enclosure maybe a couple times just with urates or something like that. But again, because she hasn't been eating because she's gravid, she's got no poop in her. And again, the only thing she could do is some urates and stuff like that. Other than that, She's in good shape, and I'm just gonna again just make sure all this shed is off her so she looks good. And again, we will not take her out again until we're actually taking her off the eggs, which is just crazy to think about, to be honest with you. That here in another 
three, four weeks tops, we're gonna actually be removing a clutch of eggs, hopefully fertile, from this girl. She's looking thick, but she doesn't look giant, right? So what's gonna happen is over the next month, she's gonna swell, 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 and hopefully she's gonna look like she's gonna explode here in another month, at least fingers crossed, you know what I mean? Again, I'm not like the best retic guy. I've only had one good clutch of retic eggs my whole time. I really grabbed Burmese pythons, for many years so I know them much better than I do these guys to be totally honest with you but I'm pretty sure that that's the pace we're on is that we're gonna see a nice beautiful clutch of eggs here in another three or four weeks and uh, so Gemma looks great her cage looks great she's pretty much done now for the next three to four weeks now it's just the waiting game it's that time of year pickles has been crushing food of course she's a Bioc green tree python and of course we have the male from last year that we bred and I think we just put him in too late and stuff like that we didn't even get him in until like the end of January Typically, these guys are kind of a-seasonal breeders, to be totally honest with you. But a lot of times, if you start breeding them around the November area, you have the highest percentage of chance, and they're going to lay eggs usually like, you know, anywhere from May till June, somewhere in that range, right? So I think this year, we've got her conditioning really good. I'm sure she's going to start to grow follicles. And if we get a male in with her and have some breeding and some copulation, now she's probably going to even grow follicles most. So we're keeping the male over at BHB. So what do you say we go get him, bring him over, and introduce him to Pickles? So this is actually the male here who just had a nice meal. He's absolutely beautiful. And of course, this is where he presides when he's not in this enclosure with pickles, of course. So we're just gonna slowly kind of get him off his branch here. Don't bite me, don't bite me. Okay, it's all right. Just use me like a tree. There you go, bud. There you go. And the thing about getting green tree pythons off their branches is you've got to let them kind of climb off. You don't want to actually pull them off because you can injure them and then I'm going to do the exact same thing I'm going to have him climb on by himself and look at how beautiful those two look together who <laughs> dog and he's sniffing around right now like wait a second I remember this enclosure and I remember this girl so hopefully he'll breed her here in the next couple days and uh, you can already see she's changing her color which is kind of what happens when they start to get into an ovulation females can sometimes go completely blue even to this really strange oxygenic change with hormones right Right? Well, she looks completely different. She almost looks like she's in shed, but she's not in shed because you can see her eyes are completely normal. So I know she's starting to go into her cycle. So uh, fingers crossed we actually get some eggs this year. That would be amazing. With any luck, it's going to be awesome. Be pulling a clutch of eggs pretty soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. As a matter of fact, if you like pulling eggs, here's a playlist of eggs like crazy. We have all kinds of colubrids, ball pythons, all kinds of stuff like that. Could you do me another favor right over here? Can you subscribe to this channel? It would mean the world to me. Have an absolutely wonderful Wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.